Hey, everybody. It's a pleasure to see you. Um, this should be working just fine. Uh, and today we've got a pretty good stock that we can focus on. Oh, it doesn't see any stream coming in. So there we go. <laughs> there we go i don't know why there's an echo but uh i have now turned off all of the extra places that this might be streaming and uh we can get this uh show on the road so to speak Let's just make sure everything's looking good. Everything does look good. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, friends. Happy to see you. This is DTST, Data Storage Corporation, did an earnings beat. So uh, that's pretty great, right? You like to see that. Um, and it, it's technically already broken the pre-market high, but I like a buy trade above 344, excuse me there, just bump the microphone. Uh, I like an, I like a buy trade above that level. Wouldn't surprise me to see a pullback first. NIO is up. This is the, I think this is pretty much the largest competitor to Tesla worldwide that's actually delivering cars in big quantities. They're Chinese. Uh, this is SoFi, one of my favorites, and um, it's up today, which makes me very happy. My average buy on SoFi is way up in the $9 area or whatever. I'm not buying any uh, extra of it today. And this is CEI. I think this has uh, some pretty big potential. I also own a little bit of BBIG and a little bit of RIBT as well. Uh, not, neither of those are looking really special today. I was looking at save because uh, Spirit, right? JetBlue and Spirit or whatever. I saw that news. Um, Pixie is below the VWAP, so we're just going to delete it. And Sundial is below the VWAP, so we're going to delete that too. We don't need to look at those. DTST is is the one to watch. That's the That's the main one on watch today. So what we look at uh, we're looking at volume on the lower part of the screen. Want to see? I want to see a million shares traded before the stock market opens, and we're well past that number on DTST already. But what I also want to see is that there's a low float on the stock, and you can see that in the lower right corner here of Trading View. You can also see it on Yahoo Finance on the statistics screen. And uh, what I'm looking for are stocks that have a float or total available shares to trade. Ideally, under 10 million. I mean, those are, that's a really good number. But I'll really take anything under 100 million, to be honest. There's just so many retail traders out there now that it's not surprising to me when you see, um, you know, a pretty gigantic move, even on a stock with a higher float. Okay. All right. I feel like I'm trying, working at NASA, trying to launch the space shuttle here. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, I got my, I forgot I got my Yankees stuff on. I had a, um, had all the Dallas fans over last night to watch the playoff game and everybody was making, uh, they, they just hate hating on the Yankees. So I had to put this on. I, you don't want to mess with the Yankees right now and you don't want to mess with Nestor Cortez. That guy is, <laughs> that guy is awesome. I love that. I'm, you know. I'm beginning to, he's got to last a few more years on the team before I go out and buy a jersey. But, you know, my kind of guy, a little bit shorter, he's got some tattoos on the arm, and, uh, you know, he's a little bit rounder around the, the edges than, than some of those, you know, players you see sometimes. And then he just punches these batters in the face, so to speak. Anyway, DTST is the focus right now. And, um, very excited about that. So uh, it looks like everybody in the room is also focusing on DTST. 
Um, my friend Dickens is here. Dickens is a fellow watcher of the Yes Network. I couldn't get it on. I couldn't get the game on Saturday on Prime, but they were streaming it on MLB TV. So I got to get it. I got to watch it anyway. I'm not. I'm not missing very many baseball games this year, which makes me very happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna blow up the hot sheet trade room with commentary about the New York Yankees, which is fine with me. It's off topic, but we're gonna allow it. I may also uh, do some work and hop on over to Miami on Thursday. I don't know if any of you are in Miami, but uh, I may hop on over to Miami for playoff game number two. I wasn't gonna do it. I wasn't gonna do it, but I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking I might go ahead and uh, I think I might go ahead and just pop on over, get some seats in the nosebleeds. There's not a lot else happening here, so let's just you know focus on focus, Rob. Focus. Yeah, not a lot happening here. We could check out Market Chameleon just to be sure. Market Chameleon has some pretty interesting pre-market in informations. Okay, pre-market. Uh, DTST is at the top with the highest percent change. Oh, DWACW. So the the warrants. DWAC. Okay. I don't know why that didn't work. DWAC. Invalid symbol. It's because I'm an idiot and I'm typing it incorrectly. Okay. DWAC is up. DWACW. Wow. That's nice. Yeah. Not enough volume. So I don't care. Um, RTLR. We'll just check and see if that looks any good. I can already tell you it does not. That looks like a merger. It looks like a buyout. Save. Oh, we care about the airlines. Boil. That's gas stuff. Most shares, Sundial. I wish they would just stop telling me about Sundial. I don't care about Sundial. It doesn't ever go anywhere that it's supposed to go. Um, I wanted to look at Agri for you because this is one that I think some people get caught up in. And what I mean by that is this is below the volume weighted average price. It's not trading a significant amount of volume and it's kind of riding underneath the VWAP. And when a stock does that, and it looks like this, it's almost sideways, you can get caught up in it and you can actually find yourself focusing on it even though it doesn't really go anywhere all day. And it can go up. This is, it's not out of the question. And I would call this, if, if you can rank them A, B, and C, A being best, B being second best, and C being the type of grades that I got in law school, meaning the worst, B, this is a B. It's kind of sideways. It could jump, but you've got to see it go above, you know, a most recent little bit of a high. And that would be above $2.11. That's be fine with me, but I don't think it's very good. I think your attention is better placed elsewhere, unless, of course, like I said, that it does move above $2.11. Otherwise, it's probably just moving down for the rest of the day. However, there are other things that you can look. There are other ones we can look at here. Let's see what A and PC looks like. I want to show you what a C looks like. This is this is kind of a B because it's kind of sideways. Um, let's just look at NEPH. No, that's stupid. Let's just go under 100 million on the float because I had a couple examples of this and I wanted to show you this CMR, CMRX. There it is. So this is just going to go down for the rest of the day. It's just that's a C. That's about as bad as it gets. What's Veru look like today? Veru is a pretty, that's a B. That's a pretty, I think just you know, always comes CLXT. That Veru just keeps coming back. This is a good example of a stock CLXT that is looking like it's about ready to just ride the VWAP down all day long. If you're into shorting stocks and stuff, that might be something that you want to look at. Uh, ATNX is the same. That's a C. It jumped, couldn't make it, kind of double body topped and then dropped below the VWAP and it's probably going to ride below the VWAP all day. If it did retest the VWAP, you could technically short it at that level. Uh, there's, but a lot of people that make money doing that and there's a lot of people that lose money doing that. Oh, uh, and by the way, all trading involves a substantial risk of loss. It's not necessarily uh, an endeavor that you should engage in. Most traders lose money. Most day traders lose money. Um, and, it, and this is not tongue in cheek and it's not sarcastic. Just be careful out there. Uh, Jeremy says DTST not listed on my iPad app, free trade broker. I am so sorry. Stanton is on fire. Absolutely, Stanton. Man, 
you know, I haven't, I haven't been in this excited about a Yankees team in a long time. Anyway, let's go back to DTST because it deserves our attention. It still hasn't triggered a buy trade for me anyway, but it's getting pretty dang close. And I want to see it not just break above a pre-market high. I want to see it break above the highest level that it has gone today so far. I'm going to move up that level so that it's really easy to see when that happens. I'm going to add an alert so that I get a little bit of a sound. And now I'm just ready to rock and roll. I've got everything that I need, all the elements in place. And then uh, we can see if it happens. Now, it may not occur, but this is a really, so far, so good. And we've got a pretty great all of the elements that we look for, there's news out. It beat on earnings. So we don't want to just trade some garbage stock that doesn't have some logical, somewhat fundamental reason to pay attention to it today. We also want to see it moving above the volume weighted average price, which is the blue line on the screen. We also want to see it breaking new highs. We don't want to just um, we don't want to just randomly buy it on a dip, um, although people do that. But you can get caught on an a T N X kind of situation where it jumps and then you buy it on the dip and then it just keeps going down. So we, we want to be careful about that. Uh, it is, it is okay when it starts breaking through like past days levels. If you want to wake up really early in the morning, if I had gotten up today at 6 AM instead of 7 AM, I could have possibly traded this at 6 25 AM on the break above the volume weighted average price that was accompanied by, I think a total of about a million shares of volume so far and breaking above every previous day's high so far, that would have been fine. And then I could have just actually ridden it for a bit and then stopped, but I don't get up at six o'clock in the morning because I'm not out of my mind and I'm not doing that. So I got up at seven, got ready. And generally right around now, we've got, we've had 15 minutes of scintillating conversation about the New York Yankees, volume weighted average prices, volume, price, news, stocks, etc. And we're just about to see a stock either break above the high of the day so far, or we're going to see it just kind of languish and just sit around. Most likely, more likely than not, between 7.58 a.m. my time, which is right now, and the next 22 minutes, you give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world, I will see a stock break above this high, make a move to 356 or 376, I'll show you how I got those numbers in just a moment, and then possibly between, in the 10 minutes before the market actually officially opens, you can see this stock drop back lower as people take profits. If it sustains its move all the way through the open, you can get a stock that runs for the rest of the day because regular old stock market trading people will open up their platforms and see that this has gapped up for the day and they don't really know about pre-market trading and then they'll just sort of just carry this along. It's pretty cool. Uh, DTST is on the way up to the 200 day simple moving average at $3 and 68 cents. It's a great level. It's a great level to focus on. It's already broken above the monthly pivot, which is at $3 and eight cents. So I have, a, I really like this. You could probably buy it now. Um, I'm not telling you to buy it now. I'm saying, you know, you can, you can jump the gun a little bit. Stop loss has to go below the volume weighted average price. You have to have a really tight stop and a wider ish profit target to make sure that you can stay in the game. Day trading is risky. Most people don't make money day trading. This included most people, even with a mentor, don't make money day trading. Just keep all of that in mind. It's not sarcastic. I'm not trying to be tongue in cheek. I'm not trying to just say something so that somebody goes, oh yeah, he said everything he needed to say. It's just the real deal. I don't, in the course of my life, this group seems to be the most logical, rationally minded group I've ever traded together with, but that doesn't make trading any easier. And what happens is even traders who are doing well day after day after day and making good rational decisions, they do tend eventually to wake up one morning and then just sort of do something impulsive and they trade too big and they get a little bit cocky. So you don't want to get cocky. You want to keep your trade size small. And uh, I think everybody here knows that I've said these things about 975,000 times. So none of that is a surprise. Those of us on the West Coast are out of our mind. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Donnie, don't mean to be. Oh, Christian's here. Um, lots of upside potential on Riot. Let's see. Really surprised. So I would love to hear, Christian, why you say recently, oh, recently surprised on earnings. Um, so all of these are the, mi you know, the, the Bitcoin miners, so MicroStrategy, right? And uh, Mara, all of these, you know, the Bitcoin 
If you look at BTC, just finding it really difficult to have a lot of confidence in that right now. So not my favorite. I would love to see Bitcoin recover. I would really need to see it jump above like 34,000. Honestly, I would need to see it jump above 48,000 before I get super, super interested. And that's there's a wide gap between those levels. However, if it breaks below the lowest low that it did in the crypto crash, which hopefully it won't do, but let's be honest, it's this is probably just leg one of impulsive waves down. A lot of pain to come, possibly. Remember, every kind of, every bubble, and don't get me wrong, this is a bubble. Let's, we're, we're going to look at Ray Dalio's uh, definition of a bubble. That's kind of going to be interesting. If it breaks $25,389, this is going to 20000 in my opinion. And you want to get out of the way or buy some puts or just, you know, get yourself ready. Put your, put your pants on because it's going to get bad. Let's just do Ray Dalio bubble definition. Just, of course, this person's going to get a lot of traffic because summarized this stuff. Ugh, no, number them. Don't make it a giant paragraph. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, good. Disclaimers all around. If I can't find this, then I'm just going to be mad. Really? Really? Ugh. Yeah. Well, I have it somewhere, and we'll we'll look it up. But, um... It, it focuses on asset prices inflated and um, uh, people using debt to finance their purchases. And oh, prices are high. Prices are discounting unsustainable conditions. This means that the nature of the purchase, who's buying it and how this demand is supplied will not be sustainable, producing corrections or a fall in price. So um, because Bitcoin, for example, isn't like a – oh, man. Every time I say this, people get mad. It's not a company. It doesn't throw off cash flow. It's not a business. I mean, there are business purposes for it, but it is in and of itself. Um, it's not a business that produces cash flow on its own. Um, new buyers have entered the market. That's true of crypto. Broad bullish feeling in the market. That was true of crypto. Purchase are being financed by leverage. That was very much true of crypto, including Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy borrowing against his own Bitcoin holdings to buy more Bitcoin. And buyers or investors made extended purchases. All of these things are true about the world of crypto. So, you know, these kinds of bubbles, they do pop. And when they pop, they, you know, they always last a little bit longer and go farther than you think they will. And um, I think some of you remember that I was, uh, you know, we were talking about this way back when, when it was retesting this trend line, you know? So anyway, that was a good job of me filling up the time while we waited for something to happen. So I own Palantir. Someone asked about Palantir. I can't tell you what to do with your money. Um, I love it. I love the stock. I think uh, long term. What's the market cap on this? So seventeen billion dollars. I think it's seventeen billion dollars. Palantir is is a bargain for someone to come in and buy, you know. And you you would imagine that it would be like a Deloitte or a um, Price Waterhouse, Coopers, you know, Price Waterhouse, um, Accenture. Those kinds of companies could probably use a data mining business or whatever. But there's others too, and maybe like government contractors. But you know, for that matter. When Amazon gets broken up, maybe Amazon will buy it. I don't know. But um, yeah, long term, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. And, you know, look at the, you know, look at how badly it has done. It's, it's really, it's really in a horrible, horrible downtrend. It doesn't look good at all. So just keep that in mind. Uh, its book value is positive and declining because the stock price is, you know, just the whole stock situation. And its return on capital isn't good. So I, I might be wrong about all of that. I think, uh, and I have said this before, 
I think Hood, Robinhood is a takeover target. It's right at the monthly pivot, so this is a good place for it to stop. I think Robinhood is a takeover target. I think now that what's his face from FTX has has shown his cards to a certain degree, and he's going to test the market. He bought seven percent of Robinhood. That's why it's up. I think Robinhood gets bought by another broker. I have been saying this now for months, and uh, it's not a recommendation. I'm not encouraging you to buy any financial instrument in particular. I own a thousand shares. I own one thousand and one point seven five one four nine nine shares of Robinhood at an average cost of eleven dollars and one cent. So I was buying it every week. Every Monday I was buying more of it. Okay. Still waiting. I'm not waiting on a lady. I'm just waiting on a stock. Did you know that Mick Jagger sang that song on the Muppets? Yep. There he is. Yep. Oh, it's all it's the Rolling Stones. I think yeah, they even did they talk to oh, they didn't. I was thinking they one of the Muppets was in it too, but he wasn't. But um maybe I just thought this looked like it was in the Muppets. <laughs> Cause it looks like he's on the Muppets, doesn't it? It doesn't it look like he's on the Muppets? I probably can't show this on the Yeah. I really thought that they did this on the Muppets. Uh, maybe they didn't. <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible that I got this? I just I just thought that their video showed them on the Muppets because the quality was so bad. Uh, okay. Let's see if he was ever on the Muppets. Let's see. Mick Jagger. Um, he appeared. He was spoofed on Sesame Street as Mick Swagger, who sings I Can't Get No Cooperation. Um, he wonders whether Frank Sinatra spoofed as Rick. S yeah, I guess not. I guess he was never on it. Was Frank Sinatra ever on the Muppets? Frank Sinatra Muppets. He recorded being green. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway. <laughs> well, we've got our entry. Um, DTST is, uh, has broken the entry and is moving <laughs> my buy zone. <laughs> That's great. So we've already hit profit target number one and it broke through the first level, maybe on the way to 376. So here's how I do my profit targets in the morning. I will draw a very small fib retracement from the high of the morning so far down to the low uh, after it. And there is there is typically, very frequently, in fact, a move like this. And you don't want to draw the line until it's already broken higher again. But there's typically a move upward. Well, when there is a move upward, then there's a, there's a sort of a mini crash back, lower a pullback, and that's the FIB structure. And that does a pretty good job of containing price. And it does a pretty good job of of giving us some targets to look at if it does break higher. So 10 minutes after the hour, let's just look up. I think it was 22 minutes and we'll give you the world, right? I used to listen to this in the shower in New York City. Wins, yeah. Yep, 10, 10 wins. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. Oh, WEMP for several weeks. Weeks I tried to. Wow. Oh, can you really stream this? Look at this. 
Oh boy, I'm just going to get in trouble for doing all this. I would listen to this all the time. Ugh, really? I have to like, we'll just uh, pause that and then we'll just go back in time and then we'll, we'll just worry about that later. But maybe I'll be able to listen to that. That would be great. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else. Nio, how you doing? Nothing. SoFi, how you doing? Not surprising. SoFi is not a low float stock. So even if it breaks out higher pre-market, it doesn't necessarily tend to continue for the rest of the day. And I do own it and I hope that it goes up, but I have to like call it like I see a double body top in a pre-market session is not a good sign for a stock for the rest of the day. If this dips below the volume weighted average price, then 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 I wouldn't I wouldn't pay attention to this again at all. And I own SoFi as a super long-term kind of thing. It's six point one eight billion dollar market cap. I just think that uh once again, I think Bank of America or Chase. I think they get in. I think they get in on this at, at this price. It's pretty. It's pretty low. And I and I think that those banks would like a younger customer base. So, C E I B B I G save C L X T C L X T might start moving. Not enough real movement here. But uh, yeah. So our focus is still just on one stock here, D T S T. And I hope you're all having a spectacular morning. It's the New New York City porch steps. It is. That's what it is, Steve. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Thorm says, just wanted to say thank you. And I've seen you since 2011. And Adventures of a Currency Trader was a catalyst for me. Wow, that is a really sweet thing to say. Thank you for reading Adventures of a Currency Trader. Long time. I tried to buy back the rights for the book and uh, put it in paperback. I wonder if Wiley at this point, I wonder if they would sell back the rights to me for even less. You never know. I don't even know if I have the original files. I'd have to re-transcribe the whole dang thing. Anyway, uh, DTST... Now it's kind of a wait and see thing. Has this just stopped completely? Is this not going anywhere? How are you all doing? Do I still have internet? What is happening here? Why is no one saying anything inside of the hot sheet trade room? Thank you, Matt, for uh, posting those bubble conditions. Thomas says Agri has a lot of bag holders. That makes me sad every time. I've been a bag holder. <laughs> I've held on to stuff I shouldn't hold on to. I once held BBIG for a little bit longer than I should have, and I once held Wayfair for a lot longer than I should have. Really regret that. Uh, I love this, that this candle dropped on DTST and then it just sucked up all of those sellers got just uh, taken up on their offer. You want to sell this? Somebody out there said, yeah, I'll buy it. We have millions of shares of volume so far. Just in the last two candles, 838,000, let's see, 870,000 shares plus 590,000 shares. Carry the one times two, 1.4 million shares, right? 1.45 million shares or so just in the last 10 minutes. Plus you add 226, 250 and so forth and you get a stock that's being heavily traded and volume is increasing it seems on average if we did a moving average on that uh, volume you would see it rising so that's a good sign now it's too late to buy it in my opinion because now it has just started to move already so i didn't buy it i'm just watching this together with you and i also i also worry like if i jump in there and buy a thousand shares uh and then you jump in there and buy some shares i don't like the thought that i'm going to that you're going to move the stock for me. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like the way that sounds. I'm not exactly sure that's illegal, but it just sounds unethical to me. And I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it sounds, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it just doesn't feel right to me on a low float stock. And I guess I would just have to consult with an attorney before I really went out there and did it on a regular basis. And I do like doing these sessions and it brings me a lot of happiness for you to make some money. So we're going to stick with that for now. And maybe on days when I, I feel like trading, I won't do a live thing. 
I don't know. I haven't made my mind up about that. But uh, did not trade the stock. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't have any skin in the game, okay? Like, I don't know. I'd, ugh, such a tough one. I'd rather talk about it and I'd rather trade it. And then you know that I'm not just talking about it without any skin in the game. And then you cross over into an, a, a gray area that I don't like being in either. So anyway, I like doing this. I like, I like joining you. I like talking about the Rolling Stones being on the Muppets. So my daughter is asking me my favorite song from the Black Keys new album. Okay, so can I reply straight from here? Yeah, I'm just going to do this. I love Burn the Damn Place Down. <laughs> My daughter and I are big Black Keys fans. Um, we love the Black Keys. We're going to go see the Black Keys in October in Houston. Let's see. What about you? Uh, yeah, so Dropout Boogie is out. And uh, I love it. Not for everyone, of course, you know. Let's see, where they open Las Vegas. Ooh. I like the sound of that. August 25th, Tampa, Florida. It's a pretty special day. Oh, wow. She likes... That's a great one. She lives for the love of money. All right. Back to the stocks. You don't you don't want to, you know, you don't want to worry about what <laughs> what what songs my daughter and I like from the Black Keys. She's 15 now. We went to see the Black Keys in Houston when she was 11. 11, I think. One of the greatest, one of the greatest days, evenings of my life. One of the greatest. We just had the best time. Stayed until the very end. Um, she was like, I, can't, I think I'm ready to go. And I was like, we're not leaving. <laughs> You're going to stay for the whole thing. And it was great. We had a really good time. So um, I'm enjoying DTST. Speaking of having the greatest time ever. Who else is enjoying? Who else is here enjoying DTST? Uh, Twitter down slightly pre-market. A lot of speculation that the, the buyout's not going to go through. Uh, and you can see that reflected in the stock price. Uh, $39 is, does, does not express confidence in this. Uh, contrary to popular belief, well, I'm going to do a long story short. I think Elon is trying to back out. Technically speaking, he cannot. There is not a breakup fee situation uh, in this example. Twitter can take him to court and force him to not only buy the company, but even force him to take the debt that's been offered to him to buy the company. However, Elon Musk has proven that he will do whatever he wants and he could fight that forever or try to anyway. And Twitter could basically say, yeah, we'd rather not. If the deal falls through, Twitter's going to drop pretty far and pretty badly. So um, I would not be making any speculative trades based on the merger. It's too, too touch and go. But you can see that traders are betting that they do the buyout does not happen. DTST, $3.76. We are at the next level of resistance. Don't you love it? And I think this is a good place to stop and say, Good job to those of you that caught this. Excellent work. For those of you that watched uh, here on Facebook, thank you for being here on Facebook. Got a lot of spam and a lot of bots and a lot of scammers commenting on the videos these days, especially on Facebook, just filled with them. And uh, commenters that look like me, use my name and so forth. Please be careful and please, uh, um, you know, please just ignore those kinds of comments and whatnot. Thank you for joining here on YouTube. And uh, thanks for being here in the Hot Sheet Trade Room as well. Love you all. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, everybody. Thanks for being here.